everybody, my name is Sabria Snowden and today on The Black Perspective, we are gonna be talking about hypermasculinity and the alpha male community. And I have some beautiful black men here today from every area of the diaspora and they're definitely gonna give us some gems that we can take away. So before we get into the introductions of my lovely guests, I just wanna talk about a little bit about myself and then also about the podcast. So my name is Sabria Snowden. I am currently a master's student at USF. Um, my major is mass communications and I love all things media and all things black. So usually when I'm doing media stuff, I like to tie in the black perspective and that's what we're doing today. So like black men, hypermasculinity, alpha male community, we're talking about it all. Let's go ahead and go to our first guest. We have Jacob Darko. Hello everyone, my name is Jacob Darko. I'm a senior majoring in biomedical sciences with a minor in psychology. At the end of my journey, I'm hoping to become a psychiatrist just to really dismantle a lot of the stereotypes surrounding mental health in the black community, as long as just like um, a lot of gender norms. I'm thrilled to be on this podcast today to talk about half masculinity as a black man and also as a member of the diaspora, specifically Ghana. Woo! All yeah. right, we have Jacob Darko. Okay. And then we have our next guest, Sam Bourne. So tell us a little bit about yourself. What's up, everyone? You know, my name is Sam Bourne Wokoye. You could call me Mufasa. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I am currently, I, I am a, I graduated from USF. I majored, I majored in uh, psychology. I'm going to go back to pursue my master's in rehab and mental health counseling. And um, when everything's said and done, I hope to become a marriage and family therapist. Uh, I will be, cause to just just to basically break a lot of generational curses and like the stigma surrounding therapy within the black community because ultimately if your mental health's not right, it's just gonna affect your physical and everything else. And it's just gonna go downhill from there. Cause I'm glad to be on this podcast today. And um, with these fellow black people. <laughs> and, uh, I'm from Nigeria. <laughs> side eye. There is a little Bombastic Nigerian side Ghana side eye, side feud eye right now, but Criminally we can get into that too. All right, so the next person we have is Parnell. So Parnell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hello, everybody. My name is Parnell Anderson. I'm currently not in school right now, and um, I'm currently working towards a digital marketing agency that I'm trying to build up from the ground up. And um, one of the things I love is psychology. And so being able to discuss this topic with some of my peers is something I'm looking forward to and kind of get a better understanding of everyone's like thought process and experiences. So I'm excited to get into it. All right, perfect. Yeah. So I'm going to start us out with a little bit of controversy. So I have a video that I got off of TikTok. Um, and I think it would enlighten us a little bit if we don't know exactly the male, um, the hypermasculinity, alpha male, like ideology. So we're gonna watch this video. It is two minutes and 29 seconds, and it is a little bit offensive. So a little bit of a trigger warning. Any guy who says he's interested in you beyond just you is full of shit. But there's also times in my life where I think it, I don't wanna be and get a new girlfriend every single day of the week. I can do that and I can decide to do that. If a woman decides to do the same, purely because her value is high enough to attract so many males, because she's beautiful, for example, it is completely different. What makes a high value woman? Modesty, being demure. Cheating is the best thing I've ever How discovered. He cheated, but why did he cheat? You guys are shitty wives. You know what I would take over a hot chick? What? An ugly chick that thinks she's hot. I love it that women want a guy who's like extremely rare and think they're on the same level. You're f***ing not, bro. Most of y'all are Ryan's very right. average. And no offense, ladies. And you're not as fresh as you think they're Women are so delusional and have such inflated ego. Sure you'll find someone to go with you. No, I won't. I'm so fat and gross. Oh. Wear that you're a heavy set woman. That's what I said. I know I'm a big woman, yeah. so what? So I was guessing your weight. And I was gonna say to you today, can you please get on the scale and then we'll have an over under. That's all. No. Why not? Why not? I'm not gonna get on the scale if you gotta weigh me. If you get on the scale. I'm serious. Why would you want me to get on this? I'll tell you why. So you could humiliate me. No. If your hair That's... isn't beautiful, the rest hardly matters. Honey, your antiperspirant spray just doesn't do it. And I'd probably never be married now if I hadn't lost 49 pounds. All of a sudden, I see her. She's now got the big phony tits and everything. She's totally changed her. Hey, when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the Who the fuck do you think you are? What? Well, this is literally the second time you've done this to me. So if we're not then what are we doing? Are you being serious? You think I'm here because I'm interested in you? And what you have to say or what you think about things is if you're so f***ing interesting? Are you dumb? You came on to me. 
remember? And ever since then, you show up, you lead me on, and then you whine about your f boyfriend. Like every time you start talking, I think to myself, who the f does this girl think she is? You are so f***ing boring. Okay, so first of all, let's go ahead and take a deep breath. <laughs> yeah, man. Wow. So... I, before we get into anything, how do you guys as black men, we have um, an American, we have a Nigerian, we have a Ghanaian, all different parts of the, the diaspora. How do you guys feel about this? And does it hold true to your standards and values? I'm just going to say uh, no. At all. <laughs> nah, I second that. I don't know there, what. There no. That was wild. Uh, I mean... From my experience personally, I grew up with five sisters. So it's like, I don't know. I feel like um, we're all equal. I don't, know, I don't know how else to say it. Like we all can do different jobs and be the same thing. And like, it's all just equal really. But that I agree. video, uh, what? <laughs> Bro, that's just, wow. You know, me growing up, you know, being around a lot of women, just like doing school or work, whatever the case may be. Um, it's just kind of hard to, like I say, it's hard to believe that people are actually like that. But I haven't had too many experiences where I've seen that firsthand. If I'm being honest, I think I've just kind of heard about it with through like different experiences with people. Mm -hmm. But no, I, I agree with you, bro. It's definitely not. That's that ain't it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's definitely um, it's an example of, like what society just like um, pushes just in terms of like um, expectations of men, expectations of women, and um, you like we have seen like a decline in just. Um, ideologies like that over time but again it just shows that it's still very much alive in our generation and we definitely have a lot of work to do to correct that yeah i would say a lot of work there were many themes in that video and that was a short video of many that i scrolled through on tiktok i literally looked up hashtag alpha man and that was one of the first videos with the most amount of likes and then it just it was really bad from Kept there. Going. And there were a lot of themes in that video. It was two minutes and that's pretty long for TikTok, but yeah. I feel like we're thrown a lot of these themes anyway. So like fat phobia or um, just like patriarchal, patriarchal um, ide ideologies about like what men and women are supposed to do, gender roles, yeah. cheating, yeah. like men can cheat and women can't do it. And just a lot of different things that have been pushed to us consistently. So how does that, like, how does it make you feel? Do you do these things in your life? How do you draw back from these standards that, like, the world is trying to put on you? Like, what's that process like? Ooh, I would say growing up as a man, especially as a black man, you know, a lot of our value comes from, like, what we provide. And I, I think that the way that you get to a place where you're kind of, like, starting to... Um, act out of like toxic masculinity is because you st you seem to think that more of your value becomes from more what you provide and so I think a lack of empathy and sympathy is where you start to go wrong and so when you start to not sympathize empathize with people is where it starts to like you really start to cross a lot of boundaries and stuff that you know you really shouldn't do as a human not just as like a male or female that's my kind of my perspective on it mm -hmm. yeah no, I agree with that. And I think that's a stereotype that men have to stray away from as well. Because, you know, I was raised in the church. I'm also a Amen. Southern belle. You know, I love my <laughs> men to provide for me, so you know. Yeah, and by the way, it. you know, this is my boyfriend right here. So, like, he knows that that's a big standard for me personally. But also we've had conversations about, like, not necessarily following gender roles that society impresses on you. But it's about what you want. But I can say I've been very much influenced by that idea that a man is supposed to provide and you're supposed to be in the kitchen and cleaning and like all that stuff. And I'm not going to lie, like some of that stuff I'd be OK with because mm -hmm. we've talked about it, Got but it. not somebody forcing it mm -hmm. onto you. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the idea that we have to retract from, like whatever you want to do in your relationship. It's your relationship. I think it's just about Ooh. not putting certain standards on people who don't want them. <laughs> what about you guys, Sanborn and Jacob? How are you guys feeling about this? I mean, I feel like I agree with what, what y'all are saying, really. Um, I feel like there's, I feel like it's a, it's okay, but to a certain extent, when I say that, I mean like certain things like, oh, um, you know, a man doing the heavy lifting or something, things like that, but nothing like, major and wild from the video like oh um you gotta you gotta be a 
you, you got to be in the kitchen 24-7, all this stuff. Shoot, I cook for myself. I, I, <laughs> That's real. <laughs> yeah, I don't real. need you to be in the kitchen. Um, and also just like, because um, what was you said, fat phobia? Mm-hmm. It's like, I mean... I, or just the standards that are put on women. Like, you have to have your body perfect to be attractive to men. Because that's a big thing in the alpha community, alpha male community as well. Just um, the whole attracting men. Like, you have to be put together. You have to be mm. submissive, which is mm. the very big word that a lot of us hate. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Jacob, what do you feel about that? Because I know... Because I was going oh, yeah. to say, um, cause just like you were saying, it's like you have to be put together and all this stuff. But, mm-hmm. like... You know, a lot of the time, from what I've seen, the guy isn't even put together. Mm-hmm. So, like, you can't be expecting something from someone else that you're not even... Mm-hmm. You're not even providing exactly. that. So, yeah. 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 So, back to this submission point. How well, do you feel about submissive behavior, standards that are put on women and things of that nature? We'll get in so, trouble now. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> so, I'll say, like, growing up in Ghana, in my experience... um, Stuff like just slut shaming, the patriarchy, just like a lot of like gender norms, gender roles. Those are like um, highly upheld. Um, my mom's American, my dad's Ghanaian, so it's kind of like different just because they came from like two very like distinct like backgrounds. So like growing up, like I saw like a lot of people reinforcing those negative things. My mom always telling like you know you can do this, you can do that. Like she encouraged me to cook, she encouraged me to like do outside do things like outside of what it means to be a man in quotes. So even like with that, that gave me more um, fluidity in my expression, just my masculinity. And it also helped me like really be, I guess, a man. I feel like even in that, there's not really a way to define that, but Mm -hmm. I feel like she just gave me the space to define it myself. I feel like society just like really forces us to be masculine in a certain way. And that's where a lot of people get confused and they're like, you know, I have to do it this way, I have to do it that way, blah, blah, blah. To your submission point, I myself am not really a big fan of that. Really? For multiple reasons, because I believe, um, so I believe a lot of um, people, they use that they use that word of, you know, my partner has to be submissive, my wife has to be submissive to really control. engage, control, big one, control, engage in all the negative behavior, it's just from, it could be verbal abuse, physical abuse, or mental abuse, and you're saying that you expect your woman to be submissive or to just go along with all that. But again, like y'all said, if you're not stepping up, if you're not providing what you should provide, if you're not meeting your partner in like all the way, there's no reason all they should be submissive to you. And that's why I don't really like that word. It's more of a control thing. I feel like a lot of men struggle with that because again, that is tied to their identity and they feel like their masculinity is tied to their power and without power, they're not a man. So. Mm. Mm. Mm, okay, so you brought up some very good points. You so did. this is- <laughs> You definitely did. This is where we can go to the next question. And I feel like this is a question that I've been seeing so much. So much because there's so much gender standards and gender norms and like uh, masculine, feminine, whatever. So how do you guys define being a man? Like, Hmm. and also, what would you define as like an alpha male? And do you use that word? So like, what is a man? What's an alpha male? And then also, (laughs) like, do you subscribe to being an alpha male? Oh, man. Um, Y'all want to go first? (laughs) <laughs> Sound like you want to go first. Um, I don't know, man. I, I just feel like, well, for me personally, I don't use necessarily use alpha man. I think it's just kind of like a man. Like we had a pr- conversation before we started, basically saying that um, if you have to call yourself an alpha male, then you're not an alpha male, right? And so, like on the term of like toxic masculinity, I think just masculine. Toxic masculinity is like some negative stuff that you know c- comes with it, right? I think just having um, being a man and being having masculinity is a place of protection. And so, for example, like if a woman goes out somewhere and she's kind of by herself, she's in a place where she kind of feels unsafe. Masculinity and just being a man would you kind of put yourself in a position to protect that woman, and it's more of a safe environment. And so, no, I think alpha alpha male alpha man alpha man. I think is just I think you're you're starting to turn it up to notches that don't necessarily you know. That doesn't really, like you said, what's the word I'm looking for? You turn it up to notches where you're not really, you're not really a man in general. You're kind of asking to be something that you're really not. You know, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Basically, like a shield. To yeah, basically that. a shield. You exactly. look like a, a alpha male or yeah. like this idea of something, yeah. but mm-hmm. like Sam Bourne said earlier, a lot of times, like 
The person who comes up to mind is Kevin Samuels. Oh, man. Like, especially in the black community, I feel like he was the one who was pushing a lot of this male. I agree. Um, yeah. Like, men are higher Definitely. than women. And, like, if you want a man, you got to do this and this. And, like, having black women come on his podcast or his, like, live shows oh. and just belittling them and yeah. just making it so hard for these women to have confidence and like as a black woman sitting here today with black men who don't subscribe to that it definitely feels good because i personally do know a lot of people who kind of have this mindset yeah. so sam Warner, you want to say something i was gonna say i mean uh i mean i saw a few of his videos i mean he did he did like women and men because like mm -hmm. i remember there was a guy he that did. came on there he was talking about uh he wanted a woman to coming to him but like like i said earlier it's exactly like yeah. he wasn't he wasn't doing anything with his life for real like he wasn't in the mm -hmm. gym he yep. wasn't he wasn't fit he wasn't making money you know buku money and it was but just like, the thing is he, kevin samuels was giving this advice and came kevin samuels died not having anything to his name and he also which is very ironic he crazy. died from a heart well, attack yeah. after yeah. telling women that they were going to have heart attacks so, That's you know, it's the thing that happens so one. many times yeah. <laughs> with these podcasters or these men who have all these Horrible. ideas and they're belittling not only men, but also women, too. And they aren't backing up with their preaching. Yeah. So very much ironic. Yeah. That's crazy. I, it but, just starts with empathy, bro. I was going to say uh, earlier when you were saying the whole, oh, my bad. When you were saying the whole shield thing and everything. Mm -hmm. um, I remember, like, remember when the uh, three went out with, um. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, like he's talking about uh, Claudette. Oh so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Our, one of our friends, she was um, she was like at the bar. Some guy came up to her. He was holding her hand. Tabria like went up to Claudette and was like, "Hey, because I'm Mama Bear." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's like, "Hey, do you want him like touching you like that?" And she was like, "Nah." She told her to move it. She told her to remove her hand. I mean, move his hand or whatever. Yeah. She did. And then like the guy kept pressing her, and then Tabria tried to get in between them, and like he just. He pushed he, me out he of the way. He pushed her out the way, yeah. and I was like, all right, let me get in there. So I got in between them, and I was like, she, I asked her if she was okay. She said no. So I turned to him, and I was like, she's all right. She's like, she's good, bro. And he was like, oh, okay. you know." Blah, blah. Which made no sense, because as soon as he saw the two, like, the two of us, then he was like, yeah, I'm going to back down. It's, yeah, like, it's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just dumb. Just dismissing the two women who were there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That are clearly saying they don't want you around. And the crazy thing is, he kept coming back too. The whole night. And like, and no just, game whatsoever. But no game whatsoever. No like he, he literally kept no coming back. No risk. Zero and then it was, I was just like, I had, each time he came back, I had to get in between them and the girls. Cause yeah. like, what are you doing, bro? Like, they already said they don't want you. So skedaddle. <laughs> move skedaddle. on. But it's just, it's, just, it's just like, I look at it like, if that was you, would you want that to happen to you? Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. No, it's real. True. And then also, I think that even goes more to Parnell's point about like, you know, his idea of or one of the ideas of manhood is like protection. And I, I very much agree with that because like even that scenario or other scenarios that I've had in my life, I do feel like, unfortunately, with the society that we live in, I have to turn to a male to provide that protection because men don't really view us as um, human, human or are capable of protecting ourselves as well because like i'm i'm like i feel like i'm tall so i'm like five six five seven i don't have a lot of weight on me like in reality a man who's like six two six three six four with a lot of weight on him could definitely grab me and like it wouldn't be much of a struggle so that's why I look to like my boyfriend, of course, or like I've been out with you and I'm just like, this man is creepy. So I, I found myself turning a lot to men because of that protection, which I shouldn't have to, yeah. but. I, I, I disagree. I feel like that as a woman, you're, I mean, that's, you are a woman as males, as men, we are more physically capable. Mm -hmm. I think as a woman, that's kind of like a part of your nature in a sense. Now, not in a negative way, it's just, I was literally thinking about it as you were talking. I think as a male, now this is gonna sound crazy, and I want to get your opinions on this as well. Um, <laughs> it may sound crazy to some people, right? I think as a male, a part of being a male is being masculine. And being masculine, I think as a female, a part of being in a relationship is being submissive at the same time. And the reason I say that is because maybe in a Christian and stuff like that, a male is supposed to lead. And with him leading, he can't lead without being, without having someone who's submissive and receptive to it. Not at the same time, as a man, we do need to be submissive as well for our women's right. But it's just some things that 
men can't do as well as females and females and females can't do as good as men right so for example like the male can provide a little bit more and depending on you know the situation or whatever like protection and stuff like that and then for a female you know a female can nurture more you know f females are more empathetic sympathetic more emotional in some ways like that so i think you kind of need both and i think that kind of like is to your nature you know what i'm saying to kind of look for certain place certain events certain things for a man to protect you and vice versa for a man to look for protection in terms of like his emotions right mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so i kind of want your opinions on that i mean i would say I would say I wouldn't say the word um <clears throat> submissive. I'd say like more like a supporting mm. character. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And like I mean, but just like you said, men and women lead in different ways. Mm. So it's like you said, the woman is more normally would be more empathetic and the nurturer and stuff, and gotcha. the man would be the provider and leader. Can you support without having? Can you support someone if they're not submissive? I think so. You yeah, think so? I think so. Yeah. And I also think maybe we should define what submissive means. Okay, I think that's a good place to because start. Because <laughs> I yeah. agree with you yeah. in certain ways, but I also know that my idea of being submissive is not like society's way yeah. of being submissive. Yeah. I'm speaking more so a biblical principle is mm -hmm. what I'm referring to. So I think that's a good way to start. I feel like I have a question. Define, we need a definition, need a definition of sub, uh, submissiveness. Um, okay. So I'm trying to let me see if I can break this down real submissiveness is like you said, kind of like what you said, it's like supporting, mm -hmm. nurturing and things like that and being the backbone of a for I say for a female, let's say in a relationship for you, talk, you guys or whatever, right? Just for, say, for sake of example, in a relationship as a male, we're supposed to be the ones that somewhat lead. That's what it says biblically, right? And we're supposed to be the ones, obviously, now when I say lead, I'm not saying in a domineering type of way, like the female, it's like they're equal in role. But when it comes down to it, the man kind of has, it's, you know, the, we want, as a man, we want our females to kind of trust us in a way where, like, we don't get it from anyone else. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And I feel like in order to have that type of, that type of love, and I guess in a sense, that type of relationship, you kind of need someone to be submissive. And submissive, not, not in a way where everything I say goes, but submissive in a way where, like, you know, I trust you. I trust you. I trust your opinion. I trust what you say about this and stuff like that. And at the same time, that goes both ways for male and female. That makes sense, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's not a one-way street where the man is like, you know, I, I do what you it's do. It's not what I, say. what I say goes. Yeah, yeah, period. definitely not that. I'm I saying say you jump, know. you say how high. Exactly. No, it's not that. I'm saying it's the the quite opposite where both people has a both have both people have a heart of reciprocity, mm -hmm. and they both are wanting to do these things for each other, and they make each other feel loved in that way. And so they're both submissive to each other. It's just as a male, and you can speak on it too, Jake. I kind of want to hear your opinion on it. Yeah, and you too, oh, I'm, I'm, too. I'm cooking. I'm, you cooking I'm over there. I'm gonna let you cook real quick. So I'm gonna say this little part. <laughs> I see, I see I see the on it. You feel me? <laughs> see the steam. So like, I don't know. So like, I, I don't want to get too personal if y'all don't want to either. But I'm saying like, there's maybe some things, and vice versa. Where Jacob, you might say an idea. You might have something that you might want to do, right? Yeah. And you know, you think it's a good idea, whatever. And T being your significant other, you know, you probably be like, you know, T, what's going on with this? Like, she probably be like, nah, that's a bad idea. That, no, that kind of sucks. Or like, <laughs> maybe you should probably figure out a different way to do yeah. it. And you being a male. And you understanding that's your woman and she has your best interest in heart, you may be like, okay, you know, she's what she's saying makes sense. Now, obviously, you can go and make decisions on your own, but at the same time, you want to make her feel loved in a way where, like, her opinion matters. You get what I'm saying? Okay. And vice versa. And then vice versa if the, you know, the roles are flipped in that sense. Now, the thing I feel like, so my issue with, like, the biblical, like, perspective or, like, definition is that. Mm -hmm. So when I look at, like, logically, because that's how, like, I mostly, like, process a lot of stuff. I got you. But, um,. I look like over time, so like if you like look over time, I guess like you will say like men have been like the dominant force. Okay. Yeah. Men are like like you know, let society, states, mm -hmm. whatever. I mean, if you look at our track record, like we're not doing too good. <laughs> we had a bunch of wars, a bunch yeah. of people died, a lot of world hunger, right. a lot of just issues in the world. You're and right. I feel like women also have not like been given like a space in society to just really fully like mm -hmm. develop themselves and their skill sets. Cause mm -hmm. like if you look over time, like it was only like recently where you know like slavery under it was only like recently where like you know women got the right to vote it was only recently where women like really got into certain like certain workspaces mm -hmm. even like ceo positions like there's really yeah like percentage wise there's not a lot of that you're right i feel like i do agree with the idea of like you know a 50 50 partnership or just even like a partnership it could be like 70 20 mm -hmm. sorry 7 30 80 20 whatever like both parties agree on but i feel like there shouldn't be like a clear cut definition of the expectations for the people if they don't set that themselves. Mm -hmm. Cause I feel like, Agreed. again, just like the way like society like frames a lot of stuff, it's really, I feel like it puts someone in like a box. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. But where they have to do this, they have to do that, or they have to even like if I'm like for instance, she's like a CEO, or she's like maybe um very successful on her own. Gotcha. Society's like you know, oh she's weird, or oh she doesn't want to get married, or oh she doesn't want to have kids, or they just. Man. Even in that, there's a lot that comes against it. Being like, oh, she's gonna die alone, basically. Yeah, even like being a, being a strong, a strong mm-hmm. black woman. It's like, oh, she weird. She this. She that. She blah blah blah. So I feel like there's, I feel like there's a lot of space for, just women to like fully express themselves and everything. And I feel like just because we haven't seen that, I don't feel like men are necessarily like you know, born leaders or like they're the answer in a way. Just because I feel like. I don't know. I look, I, look at the, I look at the man, stats. The stats don't look good to me. Because the track man, off. that's <laughs> difficult, man. I feel, I agree with you to a certain extent. I feel like some things, I feel like not every man, when I say leader, I mean like, I'll say purely in relationships. Like, that's what I mean. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say like everything is the man's the leader. I, I'm not going to go with that. Yeah. I'm saying it's some relationships and it may be some, like it, even in relationships, there may be some woman who is a little bit more um, outspoken from a little bit more outgoing yeah. in terms of that. So even in those situations, I'm just saying like naturally, I feel like, and biblically, I feel like that's kind of where it's supposed to go. And now I'm not going to get too biblical here, right? So I'm going to say this little thing and I, I kind of like be quiet, right? <laughs> so, um, so you know, we have, you guys heard of, you know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in those things, they were, those three, those three are all the same. They're all God, right? Mm-hmm. But they're all different in role. And I mean by that, you know, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit are all different in role. It doesn't mean that one's greater than the other. I felt like that's the same way I'm saying it in terms of female and male. Like for a woman, you know, like a husband and a wife, you know, the woman may be greater in role in terms of probably nurturing the kids in a way that the man just can't. Or vice versa, when a man speaks, like in terms of like disciplining their kids, you know, like telling them like, you need to get up, you need to do this, whatever it can be. They're not, they're not putting one over the other. It's just more in role. They're a little bit different. That's kind of what I mean. Yeah. And I will say, um, I agree with both of y'all in certain ways. (laughs) I think the biggest thing for me, especially as a God-fearing woman, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm a Christian, I love God. Um, And then also having a significant other who does not like gender roles at all, which I don't, I don't either. I hate with a passion. I I like gender roles, which I set. Mm -hmm. I don't like gender roles that are enforced on me. And I feel like that's the biggest thing. As far as men being leaders, I personally believe that, you know, men, they have the idea that they're born leaders mm. a lot of times, yeah, right. but then they aren't, they aren't really cultivated in their skills to really lead. And that's when that's the real. submission thing kind of goes out of the way. Because if we're going back biblically, no, that's real. you're supposed to find a man who knows how to lead. Who's he capable of doing And like, even if it isn't biblically, like just in a relationship that- That's respect. Like we need to have yeah, some people. Real. Real. We need to have people who know how to lead and how to guide. It shouldn't be a forceful thing. Mm-hmm. But like I can say, even though Jacob doesn't like submission and all that stuff, I'm very submissive to him mm-hmm. because he's on his stuff. Like he he doesn't tell me what to do. Jacob has never told me what to do. Mm-hmm. He so advises me. Yeah. <laughs> He advises me to do things <laughs> when we're talking about education or like finances has been a really, really big thing. Like mm-hmm. this man brought my credit score up like That's right. uh, a bunch yeah. of points. <laughs> so I think the difference between y'all is mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. you're just thinking about it from maybe your perspective mm-hmm. because I know you're a really good guy and mm-hmm. like I know you know how to lead. Mm-hmm. But it's just I think Jacob is probably thinking about the people who just don't have y'all. that. No, I agree with you. Now, what you you're saying about, you know, generals that are forced upon, I agree with you in terms of yeah. that. I think that's something that needs to be said at the same time, you know. Um, it kind of we work out from there. So I agree with y'all in terms of that. So nah, I'm with y'all on that, 100 percent Sam, were you have anything to say or you just been soaking it all in? Soaking it in. He cooking. Oh, I, 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 I said stuff earlier. Yeah, you cooking all Okay. Right. So let's go ahead and move on. Oh. Oh my bad, because I was gonna say I feel like it's in the middle. Just like you said. Mm-hmm. It's like I mean, I don't agree with gender rules. Like I said, I grew up with five sisters. I get you. Like yeah, like you do what you want to exactly. do in your relationship exactly and this is like ultimately it depends on the both people like is the woman okay with that is the man okay with that mm-hmm. but just like just like y'all said earlier or like i mean i referenced to it earlier it's like the man can't be trying to you know lead if he's not a leader mm-hmm. makes sense and you can't be you can't have expectations out of your woman if if you're not providing the same things. Yeah. It's percent. just this. And that literally goes back to these podcasters that we've been talking about. Yeah, and right. it's like my biggest thing um, 
is again the gender roles and all of that but i also think it goes to framing theory have y'all heard of framing theory no give me something all, all right, right. so something. framing theory explores how the presentation of information and the influence of people's perceptions and attitudes towards a particular topic or issue so framing is how a person um, conceptualizes an issue in particular ways framing theory is how a subject matter can be viewed from different um, angle, standpoint, and perspectives. But the biggest thing about framing theory for me is, for example, when I went on TikTok and I typed in alpha male, I think my search was framed mm -hmm. in a way that was very negative. Or even when you look up like different, like hyper masculinity, okay. very framed very negatively. It yeah. has the connotation, the bias that's framed around that. But then when we talk about masculinity, I think we unconsciously put all of that alpha male community and like hyper masculinity, and we put that on masculinity itself. Yeah, does that I, make sense? That makes sense. So it's it's the way that it's being framed. I think masculinity and femininity is okay. I think it's okay in so many different ways. And I think we we have both of those things within ourselves. I can say that in my career, I am very I have very much masculine energy. Jacob hates this. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob hates this. He hates when I talk about it. But like I have very much and we're talking about gender norms of society. Okay. Like I wouldn't call it masculine, but because of the society that we mm. live in, it's more masculine. So I'm a go-getter always on my p's and q's if there's something that i have to achieve it's gonna get done like i'm not a soft girly in my career mm -hmm. at all like i'm very like even my students that i teach very big on discipline very big on like doing your work coming on time and those aren't inherently masculine but in the society that we live in it's kind of that that nature because i think if i was more in like my feminine nature i would be more nurturing and like mm -hmm. And I think I still am, you know? And that's where the lines of masculinity and femininity are like blurred because mm -hmm. you are both. I get what you're saying. I think I think it kind of sounds like you just kind of described like an alpha, like you feel me? Like and I, I hate the alpha woman thing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what, thing. I think that's how they would, you know, they would, uh, <laughs> They would say it like you know it's an alpha in society. I think you're the, like the alpha female is always the go getter, always trying to do something, whatever the case may be. So yeah, I, I get what you're saying. And also, I want to say I think. In the United States, we just want to put a word to our experience. But the thing is, experiences are so much different. Even with frame and theory, there are many different standpoints, perspectives, outlooks. Like, they can't be condensed into alpha male. Yeah. Because, like, you may think alpha male and it has no negative bias. Like, you're not going after women. You're not doing this and you're not doing that. And then Sanborn, on the other hand, could be thinking like these podcasters. Yeah. Whoa. But like... <laughs> So it's like, I think we just need to stop with like the name game and trying to like name it something and mm -hmm. just be our authentic self. That's real. So I want to get y'all perspective. Like, did y'all understand the framing theory? Like, how do you think your masculinity as a black man in America is being framed? Do you think it's in a positive light, a negative light? Um, I, so the framing theory um, makes sense. Also to clarify, um, my issue is not with masculine. I just feel like <laughs> with the word masculine femininity, like how do you define them? That's like my issue. Like until I feel like I reach or I hear like a clear definition, clear definition, like I'm really not entirely going to be supportive of it. Cause again, like it don't really make a lot of sense to me. Um, but to answer your question, like, I guess like as a black man, I, I feel like my masculine is looked at like, you know, as aggressive, um, Aggressive is like, honestly, aggressive is a big one. That's like the the one that like really comes to mind because you know, oh, he's gonna be loud. He's gonna be maybe like- Angry. Angry, argumentative, like stuff like that. It's more, I guess like to, when I think of myself as a black man, it's more like negative attributes. I guess not we, empathetic. Yeah, not energy. empathetic. Just like a lot of, a lot of like negative things. Can't really think of a lot of positives because American well, how would it. how would you frame like it myself? Yeah, if you had to put a name to it, as we all do in America, how would you frame your masculinity? So, <laughs> I can only frame it for myself. Yes, for yourself. Dang, this is a tough one. That is how do I one. define my masculinity? Um, mm. I guess so. I would say I'm empathetic. 
I'm sympathetic. Um, I'm a listener. Um, I like to be supportive. Um, I also like to really, you know, set goals, achieve those goals. Outside of that, I really honestly can't think of like a lot because I feel like, to me, like that's what's important to me. That's what like I value, and that's what I try to like um, follow through with. Just to, like support my partner, support myself, support my friends, support my family. I guess that does kind of tie into the things I don't like, but uh, <laughs> that's my definition, so it's okay. Okay, so Sam Bourne, you have to answer two questions. First question is, how is black masculinity being framed in America right now? And then how would you recorrect that or define it for yourself? I mean, uh, I said growing up uh, with my dad, I'd say it's, it's more of like a, I mean, just like you said, I mean, my dad's not aggressive, but that's a, that's a great one. And uh, what I was saying earlier was the less empathetic. Like growing up, my dad, I don't, I would, I would say it's until like I was, um, 14. Nah, not even 14. <laughs> oh, Way sorry, more than that. that. Like, until I was like uh, 22, I never heard my dad say, I love you. Oh, wow. So it was like, bro, and then up on that, bro. it took like a lot. That's real. For That's me, real. It, it took a lot happening to me for him to even say that. Like, I was in the hospital. Like, I've always been in the hospital and everything, but this last, the last time I was, it was just like very tough because yeah. it was during COVID and couldn't, nobody could come visit you and everything. Mm -hmm. And like, I was literally just talking to them. Like, I was on the phone with my whole family and I was just like, bro, like, I'm just done. I can't do this anymore. And like, uh, like to this day, I'd never seen my dad cry, nothing of the sort. And, um, but then my mom told me, oh, he was crying and stuff. But for me personally, I feel like logically, okay. It don't really that, mean that much it, to you. It, it, it don't mean much to me. Like, if you're not coming to me or if I didn't see yeah, it happen, so like logically, it's like, okay. Man right there. Exactly, logically, I'm like, okay, well, he cares, but like, yeah, it really don't. It don't. It didn't do anything for me because I didn't see it. That's so weird. I can relate to that because so I, I experienced the same thing growing up. It was only really my mom who pushed my dad to be affectionate, like communicate your affection, communicate your emotions, really. Because uh, I, I was mean, like talking to a wall. Yeah, really exactly. Like talking, talking to a wall. wall. I don't know if my I don't know if my mom was doing that at all. To be honest, I think it's just like, like for me personally, like I said, like I grew up with my five sisters. We all had to like, like I get. I'd say I get. Like I love my sisters. I thank them. Um, they really without them I would not be who I am today and um, I thank them for like allowing me to you know express my feelings and emotions and just become a more empathetic person and uh, sympathetic and everything and uh, because there are times like we like I just cry and stuff like crying is a very healthy thing man mm -hmm. <laughs> I cry every day though I, I love to cry it's crazy I've been every day for like last four weeks. No, oh, literally. Okay. Kid you not. It's a relief. It like, feels can so we good. Just actually talk about it? Because exactly. yeah. I love crying. Let's talk about it. I feel like Jacob. I, 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 I honestly hey, haven't gone there yet. Yeah, I'm still working on it. But like, <laughs> yeah, when's the last time you cried, bro? <laughs> bro. Oh, that's a long time. That's a long time. <laughs> yeah. that's a, that's I didn't think about that. Time. Said, bro. Last time I cried honestly, was uh, been like last months. Sunday in church. Really? Yesterday. For me. Last time I cried. Actually, this morning. Mm. I oh, I cried today. Yeah, I <laughs> before cried this too. podcast. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh man. That's but something I, for you. I really think that like, first of all, just, let's throw out the masculinity and femininity. Okay. Everything. Mm -hmm. Men should be in touch with their emotions. Big facts. Definitely. And it Big shouldn't facts. be a feminine or masculine mm -hmm. thing. Amen. Ooh. They thank should you. just hey, be create, emotionally create. mature. Yeah, so, that's what I love to hear. <laughs> thank you. Emotional uh, maturity is a big thing. To, uh, emotional, it's a big thing to me. It's like, um, if you like, I also feel like it, it comes with uh, taking accountability and everything. And also, like, just looking at like your partner's like, I gotta think of like how they would feel if I did a certain thing, yes. so that you know I gotta put myself in their shoes. A thousand percent. It's like if you're not putting yourself in your partner's shoes, then like you just. Bro, I, the fact that you say that too, bro, because you you resonated with what he said in terms about the father and stuff like that, and bro. To this day, bro, my dad still does not say I love you, and I remember I was going off the school, I was going back to school, and he he just started crying randomly first time I ever seen my dad cry and I was like bro what's up with you and I'm like mom what's up he's straight I'm like, weird. I'm like bro this, I'm about to get back on the plane and stuff and he just said I, he said I love you and I was like oh, oh like, how did I, that feel I was like what you said bro even though I seen him crying seen him crying and literally see the tears 
it didn't do as much as I thought it would for me. It made me feel good just very briefly in a moment. Mm -hmm. But like after like a couple, like five steps, it was just, yeah, it just went away, bro. <laughs> and I say that because like, bro, I did, I, that happened when I was, I think I was 23, 23 or 22. And bro, us growing up, you know, like us being black men in America, bro, it's just kind of like, it's just like, bro, like we've been growing up for so long and we not getting that from our fathers. It doesn't mean as much. So like, I've kind of like a, a hard shell over the things that my my father does and my father like says to me. And like, like you said, like, bro, having certain females around you and certain people around you, allowing you to do that allows you to, to show yourself like, show yourself like who you really, it goes back to what you were saying about being a black male and just being vulnerable and it not being female or a male thing, it's just being vulnerable in a place where you can literally just talk about your emotions mm -hmm. and no one judge you, bro. Mm -hmm. Cause I feel like a lot of people are so concerned about like, what somebody's gonna to think. say or the yeah. image or like, yeah. or even those times where you say something to somebody that's kind of close to you mm -hmm. and then you like, you give them a little bit and you just kind of kind of see what they're gonna do with it. And it's just kind of like, they're like, oh yeah, they're not really getting me, so I can't really, I got, I got, I got to reel it back in. You feel me? So yeah, back to what you're saying, like just being, you know, just being vulnerable with any and everybody, and just like being vulnerable as a male is very, very yeah. difficult. But it's like you said, it's very much needed, and it's not a male yeah. or female thing. I mean, I've even like uh, heard, like seen, seen and heard things where it's like a girl be like, oh, um, I like a man. My man cries. Yeah, my man, man cried. He cried, and like I just lost all respect for him. Bro, I, like, I was like, what? What's wrong? You. But it's also the thing that we have to understand is gender norms are just are not just impressed on men. Yes, oh, yeah, they're course, impressed yeah. on everybody, mm -hmm. and they're generational. They're very historical. They're mm -hmm. back with time. So it's going to take a long time for us to get to the point where oh, we man, can man. be to break that curse. Yeah, but the so thing is, y'all were talking about fathers, and like my dad. My dad, first of all, is a pastor. Okay. Use that how you want to use it. <laughs> but he's also like the the most emotional man that I have ever seen in my life. We love to hear like, it. Like this man can cry on the drop of the dime. Like he always has tears in his eyes. Like I think it's a really beautiful thing because yeah. I it's really hard to find men who can really just cry and just like not only crying for other situations or like sad stuff but the happy stuff yeah. like even in church crying to god like when i tell you having a father who's emotional it didn't make me more emotional it made me more comfortable comfortable mm -hmm. and understanding to express, yeah. to express my emotions like and i think about my brother my brother he, right now he's 14 i think he's about to turn 15 or i might be off yeah something like that he, he gets to that age where i'm not remembering his, his birthday but I think this will be a good segue into our last and final question. Like, my dad's impact on my brother, I think it would be very good. Mm -hmm. And we were actually talking about this because I was asked my dad, like, you know, do you talk to my brother about, like, how he treats women? And I know he does on, like, I just didn't know what level. Okay. So I'm like, I think you need to talk to him deeply because he's like, that age like where the he's... nuances. Yeah, the oh, nuance, that's... like, how to really respect yeah. women, how to talk to them. Mm -hmm. And I'm really glad that I have Jacob in my life because I think through him, he's he's able to see it, mm. not only from my parents, but also through the perspective of like our relationship. That's a good point. So I was telling him like all this alpha male community and like masculinity and hyper masculinity, all this stuff that's happening and it's really bad in schools mm. yeah. with like his age group. Yeah. Like they are indoctrinating these children and they are like becoming incels, first of all. <laughs> and then Hell also, yeah, men who just like <laughs> hate women like to their core mm -hmm. so i was talking to him and i was like you know first of all do you know this because my dad he not a big social media person gotcha. so i was telling him about everything and then i was like you know just talk to him as from a, a dad to to son relationship mm -hmm. and just encourage him about these things because i know he's seeing it so my question is you know hypothetically if y'all want to have children and like you hypothetically have a son how are you going to talk to him about gender roles, standards, and not in a way that it like enforces them on them, but also just like respect. That's the biggest thing for me. Gotcha. Respect. So who wants to go first? I know that's a big question. I never actually like, thought about this before, to be honest. I just figured like I would teach him the way that I grew up. I mean, not like I would be, I will do like the opposite from like, cause there's like certain things like, you know, you feel like your parents did that they shouldn't have done, so like you're not yeah. going to do what they did. Because my parents is like, I never, they never came to me as like, oh, um, how like 
I guess like how are you, just like a simple how are you doing, you know what I'm saying? They never right. never even done that or just like they never talked to me about relationships or everything. So it was like growing up I had to figure it out myself <coughs> and then also through my sisters and also like friends and stuff because for instance, I don't surround myself for, with people that have that <coughs> toxicity and all this stuff because ultimately it's going to change your mindset or affect your mindset. It's like, I don't want to deal with any of that. So like if I had a kid, I would just be there for him, I guess. Like, I don't know how else to put it. I'd just be there for him. If he needs to talk, I could like have those talks with him and make it be like, make it make me be someone that he can come to mm -hmm. when he's having, or him or her, or having said problems or issues and they need someone to talk to. I was gonna ask you, uh, Jake. You want to go? I was gonna ask you a quick question, real quick. There you go ahead. I was gonna ask you, like, what what would be an example of that? Like, um, like an example of like, like he can come, like he, your son coming to you and asking you, and him being you being the person that he can come and talk to you and feel and feel free to be vulnerable and stuff with. What would be an example of that? Example like, oh, hey, you know, Dad, I'm struggling with like, um, like a, it's like, oh, there's this girl I like or something, mm -hmm. and she's not really giving me time of day or it's like uh, and it's making me feel like like I just feel like sad about it or whatnot okay. and like uh, we just have a whole conversation about that mm -hmm. instead of it being like oh okay yeah. or it's like I mean even him coming to me just with that information you know what I'm saying yeah. it's like that that's big good. already yeah it makes you feel good it's like I could never go to my parents with <laughs> any type of information like that I feel you a thousand so, uh, I've been preparing for this moment for my entire life, and I know exactly what I'm gonna do. So, um, I don't really believe in like uh, spanking your kids. Okay. That's a big one for me because again, I feel like there's really no other way I can say this, but to me, it's really like you're treating your child like an animal. Because you know, if I hit you hard enough, you're gonna listen to me. It's conditioning. It's it's simple conditioning. I feel like when we look at like this generation, the art of communication is really lost. Because I feel like a lot of issues that, you know, kids have or kids go through, you have to think like a child's a child, their brain's not developed. They really don't even know what they're doing on this earth. They're just like freeballing, like freestyling it. I feel like if you can really, you know, freestyling, freestyling, freestyling. But if, if you can, so like for me, what I really want to do with my kids is um, I want to establish like open communication to any and all topics. I want to make sure they feel that they have the room to speak to me about any and everything. Mm -hmm. I also want to set up um, discipline too, because I'm not going to, I can't let my children like, you know, do whatever they want to do, because that's it's not, dead. that's dead. That's it's not going to work nope. for them, for me, for anyone. So definitely still like, you know, um, discipline them. I believe there are like healthy ways to do that. Maybe, you know, not necessarily like, so let's say maybe I say they want to go to a party. I'm like, you know, you didn't do your assignment. You kept your room dirty. You're not going to go to the party. You're not going to go to the party. Like little things like that can also like, you know, shape behavior. I feel like there really is the need to go all crazy because. Beat them. Because even, like, even, and beat them, honestly, and beat them. Because even when you look at adults, you got people who are like 50, 60, 45, 30. They do not know what they're doing with their lives. How can you place such a heavy burden expectation on a child? They do not know what to do. And you, you, so you choosing to birth them because that was your choice. That was mm -hmm. the child's choice. That means you're ready to assume the responsibility to just really nurture them mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. And I believe to really do that and to like really make the best person, you need to give your child your all in that way. So for me, okay, just like heavy on um, communication, discipline, just again, giving them the space to feel free to do anything and also talk to me about anything. Because that way you can really like help each other get to where we need to get. Like even even with that, it's like what the the problem I feel like would be um, when you when you go to your parents, right? And it's like you gotta you gotta create a space for it's like where even if you're the one doing something wrong, they can come to you and be like, hey, I don't like that you did X, Y, and Z, and then you can't be like, okay, and. Yeah. You gotta like absorb that and like ask them, talk to them, be like, oh, why you didn't, or even explain why you did what you did. You know, simple things like that. Cause uh, I keep going back to growing up. That's just how it was for me. Like, they never, it's like, I was like, oh, I didn't like this. It's like, okay, and you don't like, respect so your what? child. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, oh, uh, I'm your dad or yeah. your mom. Like, I could do whatever no, I want. That's not an excuse. Oh, that's disrespectful. It's yeah, like, is it disrespectful for me to ask, to ask that? Or oh, what's you, my opinion? So, yeah, what's my opinion to Bro. say that you clean up? Something that you messed up? Bro, I literally watched the, I think I watched the little reel on Instagram not too long ago. 
and or TikTok may have been. And one of the things that the man said is that as a parent, you need to allow disrespect, right, from your kids. And so because and he framed it by saying he further elaborated, basically saying that if a kid is being if you tell your kid to go clean up the like the trash or the yard or something like that, your kid is well within his right to understand why he's doing this mm -hmm. not just you just like you said you just can't say because i'm the parent go do, go do what i say mm -hmm. but you know that's like you said you know they're underdeveloped they don't really know what's going on and so them asking that question should make you feel good first off because you know they're starting to get a level of understanding for themselves and not just based off anyone else's level of understanding so like when they go to school and someone tells them to do this it may be another kid at school who's a little bit more outgoing a little bit more confident and that kid may tell your kid go do this and him not having his own thought process or anything like that may make him do that thing, you know? And so, and that, so. you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, oh, how, yes, is that, you feel me? Yeah, yes, sir, you know, you know what I'm saying? So yes, sir, yes, ma'am, right? <laughs> and so being able to have your kid come to you and like ask questions like that means a lot. And back to what y'all were both saying about like open communication, like, and being a parent who's empathetic and sympathetic, sympathetic as well, and just understanding that, you know, we do wrong as well. Yep. And, um, you know, bro, it's gonna be times where you're gonna do your kid wrong and coming to your kid and being like, you know, son, like, you're right, I probably should let you do this. Or I'm sorry. Or I'm sorry, <laughs> oh, you feel me? One. I'm sorry. And then, like you said, bro, allowing him to come to a space where, bro, like, even having open space of communication and vulnerability, like, let's say you're, you know, as being, I, I didn't play little kids, little league sports or anything like that. But let's say we're in a little league and I play a sport, or my kid plays sport, PJ, pardon me, I'm gonna get it. I gotta have me PJ, got me, gotta have me one, right? So little PJ, he's going to play the game, basketball, softball, whatever it is, or whatever, football, right? And you know, they lose at the championship game, right? He starts crying. Most fathers, well, the way I grew up, and I've seen a lot of men grow up, is like, no, ain't no crying, ain't no crying. You need to man up, no, we got him next game, you feel me? Well, it's just like, no, bro, like the man sad, it was something that he was really putting some work towards. Yeah. Let the man cry and tell him it's okay. Yeah, feel you feel, let him feel that and then let him process that stuff. And like you said, go back to what you're saying about having him have his own thought process and let him think these things out for himself so he has a level of understanding on how to navigate through the world, bro. Mm -hmm. So, man, yeah, so I agree with both of y'all, which I was saying in regards to that. So that's kind of how I would kind of go about it. Yeah, and I definitely agree because um, as a woman who, you know, I have my, my man now, but as a woman who, <laughs> who was on the dating scene once, I feel like men definitely lack emotional maturity or just being able to sometimes even have conversations surrounding emotion. Yeah, definitely. And it's like, it's from, it's stems from interactions like that one that yeah. you were talking about. Like, you know, the dad or the mom, because women do it to mm -hmm. little boys too. They never gave them the space to feel or to have an opinion or mm -hmm. to really do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. And then they're bringing all of that emotional baggage into their relationships. Yeah. And then that's when it goes back to the submission thing. Like you already don't really have the mind to the foundation. really have a good thought process. Yeah. You don't really have the mind to really do what you need to do. And then you're trying to lead somebody mm -hmm. with that foolishness. That's yeah. the thing where it's just, it gets really, really, really muddy. Mm -hmm. But unless y'all have some other comments or concerns, I think we're gonna wrap it up. We've had some some really good conversation. We've gone mm -hmm. through a lot of points. Um, I just wanna end off and say, thank you guys so much for coming. I think that this can impact a lot of people, not just black people. <laughs> Sorry y'all, the camera went off, but as I was saying, I think it's just so important for us to have conversations like this, especially with people who look like us. I think a lot of things are really a spectrum. It's not always like the hard, end of like the ideas yeah. but we see that on instagram and we see that on tiktok and we see that through the media so it can really cloud your judgment and cloud your mind so thank you guys for being here and talking i'm super excited to put this out i'll also say hi to my teacher hey, oh, hey. hey. give yes, her a good wave <laughs> oh uh vadishka Vadishka. Yes. This is a project for my global media class. And thank you so much for allowing me to do a podcast like this because I think it's very it inspirational. Yeah, this is fun. So, yeah. Thank you all for coming. Hey. Start a home podcast.